My name is Tanya Klimenko. I am a senior lecturer in biomedical sciences and I work at Sheffield Hallam University. I have a PhD in molecular biology and 22 years of experience in research. Uh, some of it, about a third of it, a research in viruses. Uh, you just come off from doing a speech. I only arrived at last minute, so I didn't catch most of it. In a nutshell, could you just tell me what, what it is about the virus you know, that you, your concerns are? Um, so I, I spoke to uh, people in this park and I asked them to start questioning. As a scientist, I believe uh, we cannot live without questioning what's happening. Uh, do you mind if I take off my glasses because of the... Um, so as a, as a professional, I am uh, worried about lack of scrutiny and lack of good data, lack of publicly available data and lack of adherence to uh, well-established uh, guidelines in how decisions about treatment of COVID or screening for COVID or vaccination against uh, SARS-CoV-2. So lack of scrutiny, lack of adherence to guidelines, lack of good uh, open data about it f coming from government and authorities. This is what makes me question it as a professional. The seriousness of this virus as an epidemic, and it clearly is a very serious epidemic, but equally the fact that actually the great majority of people will not die from this. And I'll just repeat something I said right at the beginning because I think it's worth reinforcing. Most people, are, well, a significant proportion of people will not get this virus at all at any point in the epidemic, which is going to go on for a long period of time. Of those who do, some of them will get the virus without even knowing it. They will have the virus with no symptoms at all, asymptomatic carriage, and we know that happens. Of those who get symptoms, the great majority, probably 80%, will have a mod mild or moderate disease, might be bad enough for them to have to go bed to bed for a few days, not bad enough for them to have to go to the doctor. An unfortunate minority, will have to go as far as hospital, but the majority of those will just need oxygen and will then leave hospital. And then a minority of those will end up having to go to severe uh, and critical care, and some of those, sadly, will die. But that's a minority. It's 1% it's or possibly even less than 1% overall. And even in the highest risk group, uh, this is significantly less than 20%, i.e. the great majority of people, even the very highest groups, if they catch this virus, will not die. But then another reason why I question it is what you hear my English is not native. I am originally from Ukraine. I grew up in Soviet Union. I was 15 when Soviet Union collapsed, so I was not an innocent baby. Uh, my forming years, my teenage years, were, they were at the period when Soviet Union was collapsing, when the whole narrative around Soviet Union was collapsing. So I saw government propaganda falling in pieces. Would you and, say it was similar to what's happening here? And that's exactly what I'm saying. What I see now around me is how the government propaganda is being built from pieces. So it's a, in Soviet Union, I saw how it collapses, but I, I saw it in its might and then how it collapsed. And here, it's like a backwards video. I see how it starts from small pieces and then it builds up, builds up, builds up. And I'm extremely concerned it's happening in, a in, in what's supposed to be developed democracy democracy, in what's supposed to be a country where, where I moved to and, and my kids are here because supposedly this is a country where there is freedom of speech, human rights and some common sense and not a wall, you know, wall of government propaganda and censoring and oppression. So that's, that's, what, that's what shocks me. And that freedom of speech seems to be being suppressed at the moment with governments. I just want to ask you, back on the vaccine, uh, you got concerned about it and, and the government are thinking of fetching it into play this year, Christmas time. Will you be taking the vaccine? No, I will not be taking this vaccine. I have to say I am pro-vax. I have to say I believe in vaccination. My children are vaccinated, I am vaccinated and I am grateful to my parents for vaccinating me. And if there is a genuine reason for a vaccine and if there is a good vaccine which benefits overweighing risks, I will take a vaccine for such virus, you know, protecting from such disease. 
in current situation, in this what data available to me, I do not see a reason for this vaccine to be brought in in such rush and most importantly I am totally against it being mandatory. It was classed as a HCID in January 2020, wasn't it? A high consequence infectious disease, COVID. Did you know that it was actually uh, reduced from uh, high consequence infectious disease on the 19th of March 2020, four days before they locked down the country? Yes, I know this. Yes, I, I, uh, oh, I know this and I know what uh, I know what some countries never looked down and they had exactly the same curve of growing up uh, cases and deaths and then falling down. So I also know what uh, lockdown did nothing, in my opinion, to the so, natural cause of this virus. So do you not think then, because of the way they're saying that the people are dying, do you not think it should be raised back up to a HCID, high consequence infectious disease? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I think there is uh, there is a big problem with how deaths are recorded in this country and in some other countries. I uh, I believe the um, way the COVID deaths are recorded uh, in this country is not rigorous enough. I believe there is a very high risk and I'm actually convinced that it's not just the risk, it's what's happening, but deaths are exaggerated. And I'm going to say Valence. Was he a doctor or a professor? Uh, so Sir Patrick Valence? Yeah, the reason why I mentioned his name, because he was the one who said, um, you know, you have to be careful about these Covid deaths because they're not always recorded correctly. It's worth remembering again that the ONS rates are people who've got COVID on their death certificate, it doesn't necessarily mean they were infected because many of them haven't been tested, so we just need to understand the difference. I think uh, you are referring to um, some of the um, um, information from Spring and uh, and I think, I, I don't know um, what, you know, uh, it does not really matter um, what... Um, one person says or in, in, individual says of course he wields a lot of power and of course if he said what there are questions about uh, recording this uh, death you are quite right in you know paying attention to it and quoting him but what i am saying is that regardless of what one person said or one expert said there are some um, a very well established guidance on how uh, cause of death is determined and uh, it's totally out there in public domain but in this case in the case of COVID-19 cause of death is not determined by conventional means if you look at every news program when they broadcast number of deaths today and it says like 528 deaths and then a small print goes deaths of all causes within 28 days of positive test so it's even that but it's deaths of all causes which is counted into the statistics. And that's yet before we started to discuss with you whether they right or not to put it on a death certificate. And I've noticed as well, it does say people testing positive for who have died, doesn't mean to say they've died of it. Absolutely, this is uh, uh, another um, um, item or another topic which is discussed and uh, there is plenty of uh, open information for anyone who wants to see that um, people who die of COVID are not the same as people who die with, by testing positive. And uh, one other thing here to, to add here is that um, people who die from COVID, even those who died from COVID, um, they would pro often have COVID as the final straw. They would often have lots of very serious health conditions. And I know it's going to sound cynical, but if you are very ill or very frail or very old, you are likely to die of something. And it's just this, 
unique overreaction we have, what we uh, want to see COVID in everything. We've forgotten, it seems like we've forgotten what people die. They die, so they, they say died of natural causes. So COVID is natural cause. And on a final note, I think um, seasonal flu seems to have disappeared. Uh, yes, and I, um, again, I need to bring up my credentials. I am PhD in molecular biology and um, I uh, am convinced but uh, it's nothing to do with conspiracy or misdiagnosis um, or labeling flu cases as uh, uh, COVID cases or misclassifying uh, influenza virus for SARS-CoV-2 virus. No, I believe in um, surveillance which is done by uh, WHO for a purpose of vaccine design and it's been done for many years they have not changed their methodology so there is nothing uh, wrong with uh, them recording the fact the real fact on the ground fact on the ground is influenza virus circulation is down by 98 percent in human population now and this is a this is a fact well thank you very much okay you're very welcome thank you